Welcome to Zen Magic. And today, I'd like to welcome you to Fundamentals Episode 4. Today, we are going to be talking about false shuffles and cuts. If you haven't seen the video on how to shuffle and cut the cards, that video is up here. Check that out first, and then come back and watch this. Because you do need to know how to do those in order to do this. Now, we're not going to be talking about the false cuts and shuffles that control the cards. Controlling is going to be a video next week. These false shuffles don't do anything at all. They keep the cards in the exact same position as you saw from the intro. You shuffle them up, but the card still stays where it is, and so does the bottom one. So, let's get into how to do that. We're going to start with the cuts, as always. Cuts first, then shuffles. Okay. So the first one is the easiest one, but it does require some misdirection. We're going to do a video on misdirection pretty soon. But this is all the cut is. We have ace on here and another ace on the bottom. We just go like this, cut the cards, and then we gather the cards back up. If you do it right to the spectator, the cards were shuffled and cut, but they actually did not do anything. Now, I'm sure a lot of you figured out what was happening really quick, but if you misdirect them, when I do this, I say something like, do you know how many cards are in the deck? And when you ask them a question, they have to answer, and they're not focused on that you're just picking up the top, putting it back on the middle, and then putting them on top of the bottom which doesn't change the cards at all. They stay in the same order. It's all misdirection. Now you can ask them anything, but I prefer just to ask them how many cards are in the deck because most people don't actually know this so they're gonna be thinking really hard about it. That's the thing about misdirection though. They could be looking at you doing the cut, but if they're busy trying to come up with an answer, they're not gonna be focused on actually what's happening, what's actually going on. So that's the simple one, and you do need to know how to do a table cut, but instead of putting it down and then putting the rest on top, we are making three packets and then gathering them up again. And yes, it has to be three. That's the actual original version of the cut. Three packets. And you didn't change anything. Alright, so now let's get into the second one, which is the one you just saw in the intro, which is the three packet cut. Now for this one, you need to know how to do a swing cut and a swivel cut. And this does not work with a one-way back design. These cards are not one-way back design. But basically, you're just doing a swing cut on a third of the packet. Alright? You're not doing half, you're doing a third. A third of the packet. Alright? And you swing that over, and you grab it. Now once it's in your hand, you cut the rest of the remaining packet in half. And then you're going to bring this hand back, and it's going to be grabbed by the ring finger. And instead of grabbing this packet, you're going to grab the middle packet and pull that out. And then you swivel cut the top packet onto it, and then drop the rest on top, and that didn't change anything. Let's break it down. The top packet the middle packet, and the bottom packet. Top packet goes and is grabbed by this finger. You grab the bottom packet and then place the middle packet on top of it and then just drop the top packet back on top. So it's not even really cutting the cards. It's just placing them somewhere in the other hand. It's basically the equivalent of just placing it in your hand. That's all you're doing. You cut Swing cut over the middle packet, drop the top packet on top. And that doesn't change anything. This kind of cut can be easy to detect, but remember that misdirection. So again, swing cut over a third, grab it. Swing cut over another third, place this one down here, grab the middle one. Swing cut the packet on top, and then drop the remaining packets. And that doesn't change anything. Okay. So there's one more false cut we're going to talk about. I actually do not know what the name of this cut is. 
I'm 100% sure I didn't come up with it though. But for those who need to know how to do this, this is called an S, S cut, or a Z cut actually. Z cuts are used in flourishes a lot. But basically the cut looks like this. You come down here, drop that in there, and then do that. Complete the cut. A little complicated, and it's a little messy, but when you do it at speed, it actually is a false cut. Alright? Because you drop the packet in there, then you do the cut, and that doesn't change anything. So let's break it down. The Z grip will talk about when we do flourishes, which I am going to do actually. But you're in this position. This is a Z grip. You're going to bring your thumb up and around this packet to clear the packet. And then drop it behind and then keep a break. And separate it. Then the top packet is going to come over on itself, itself and go drop down there. And then it can drop onto that packet, and you complete it with the Charlier cut, which we talked about in our last video. Check that out. I'll put the link up here again, in case you missed it. It's up there. How to do the one-handed cut that we talked about in that video. So, let's try this again. This time there's a new cut on the bottom. All right. So, now that we've talked about false cuts, I'm actually going to go over the, that cut one more time, just in case. So you're in this position. You come over with the middle packet. All right, this is the middle packet, this is the bottom packet, you're still holding the top packet. You bring the top packet over and let it drop on top of the middle packet. And then you cut the card, and the bottom packet is placed back on the bottom. And the top pack is still there. I actually don't know the name of the cut. I thought I created it, turns out I didn't. I'm 100% sure I didn't. Let's get into false shuffles now. Okay, so false shuffles. Here's what we're going to do for this. False shuffles are normally used for controls and stacking the deck. We're not going to talk about those. We're going to talk about the false shuffles that keep cards where you want them to be. For example, if somebody picks a card, like the ace, and they put it on top, you need to be able to do a shuffle that keeps the card where it is. Alright? And that is just by riffling, by starting with this packet. So you riffle, you get to the end of this one and keep going with this one, which has actually kept that pack on top. Alright? That did not actually work. But you can see, this packet has the top card. This one right here. So when we shuffle it, we're just going to keep that card on top. And as you can see, it did stay on top. Alright? Now, I did say there was a false version of the table cut in my last video. Or the dealer shuffle, actually. And that looks like this. It was kind of what I had been trying to do. You just do this, and then you're just like, okay, we'll square, we'll just put them back together. Obviously, you do that a little bit more subtly. You want to do that a little bit more subtle. So, and, but it does work. Obviously, this angle with the camera, you can actually see what's going on. But the people around you at the table will not actually be able to see that you just did a false cut. So again, you shuffle the cards, and you go to go to put them together. You're just going to lift it up, and then push them together. That's all that's happening. For their eyes, they don't actually see that because it's being concealed by your hands. Right, as you're doing it. So they don't see it. So again, you shuffle the cards. Alright, they're shuffled. And then you separate them like this, by going this way. You lift this packet up, up, up over it, and then push them back together. To their eyes, it looked like you just shuffled it, but you really did not. The Ace of Hearts is not on top. What happened there? Did I mix up the packets? Yeah, I did. Okay. If you did it right, then the Ace of Hearts will still be on top. Yeah, okay. Let me just show you. Come over. You shuffle the cards. 
And then from the concealer with your hands, you're just lifting it up over and squaring it back together. Ace of Hearts is on the bottom, Ace of Diamonds is still on top. Which actually was switched. Alright, let's talk about another false shuffle. So we've covered two so far. The false shuffle that keeps the top card where it is, and the dealer's false shuffle which accomplishes nothing. There's one more false shuffle, or actually it's a cut, that I cannot actually demonstrate for you guys. It's more of a flourish, but it is a false cut. It's called the butterfly cut, which I cannot actually teach to you guys, but go check out the butterfly cut. It's all over YouTube. For, to do it, you do need to know how to do a one-handed cut in both hands, all right? Both hands. Half the packets in each doing a one-handed cut. I'm basically going to try to demonstrate to you guys without doing the Charlie cut because the Charlie cut sets it to where it needs to be. Basically, you're letting these packets go. You flip them out like this, and then you place the packets on top. If I had done a Charlier cut, it would have kept it in the same position. But in this case, it didn't, because I left out a step. So go check out the butterfly cut. I can't actually teach it to you guys right now. But there is one more thing I would like to talk about that is a false, false shuffle. And what a false, false shuffle is, is it looks like you're doing a legitimate shuffle, which you are, but what they don't see is that there's one extra step. And actually, I really should put this into the controls video, but I'm just going to share it with you guys because I actually left this one out of my last video. There was one more shuffle I should have mentioned in that video that I didn't. This is called a Hindu shuffle. Where you hold the cards like this, and you're pulling them out just like this, alright? That's a Hindu shuffle. It's basically an overhand shuffle, which I'm sure everyone's familiar with. You're just doing it from a different position, pulling them out like this. So that's a little bonus from this video, because I didn't include this in my last video. But, next week, we are going to be doing forcing and controlling. They're going to be two separate videos. And I will show you how we do more shuffles and cuts, but they are used to control cards or force them. So that's all next week. Um, there's one more, like I said, this is a false table cut. Now, we talked about the three packet table cut, but this one looks a little bit more like real. It's basically this. Going to swing cut over a third of the packet, going to grab another packet, drop it on top, and then do that. Alright? That is the false table cut. So again, I grab two packets, drop them on top like that. Here's what's happening. So we have eight of clubs on top. This is the top packet. This is the middle packet. I drop the bottom packet. I put the middle packet on top, and then the top packet. Guys, remember, this only works on misdirection. So, remember that this looks like a legitimate cut, doesn't it? Because you saw the table cut video. And it can be done with the table cut. Alright, that didn't accomplish anything. Still ate a clubs on top. You probably saw what I was doing there, but if you distract them with misdirection, it looks like a normal cut. That's the false table cut. So, a video on misdirection... I'm thinking about posting that today. Probably will be uploaded today. Just get that misdirection out of the way. I'm going to be teaching you how misdirection works and some tips on how you can make it work for you. So that's going to be uploaded today. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And remember, we perform to amaze. Yeah.